What's poppin' and welcome back to a brand new video. Let's get right into it. Today we're gonna discuss the performance of the app within the first three months of it being launched on the App Store and the Google Play. Quick recap for those of you who are new. Over the past year, I've been building an app called Wonder Sagas. Essentially what it is, it's a platform with children's stories in audio format where you can subscribe, get access to a library of children's stories that are both original ones and ghost written ones just for you to listen or for your kid to listen specifically, however much you want. So three months ago, I launched this on the App Store and I launched this on the Google Play Store 1.5 months later. So it's been on the App Store for three months and it's been on the Google Play Store for one and a half months. So what you're curious to know and what you clicked on this video for is to know how much money have I actually made from this app thus far. And let me tell you, the answer may or may not shock you. We'll get to that in the end. First of all, we're gonna go through some of the performance, how many downloads we had, how many impressions we had, etc. So let's get to it. I'll pull out my insights here. I can be begin to tell you that on Apple, we had to date 3,900 impressions, meaning that on the App Store, 3,900 people have actually seen our app in the little like list view where you can see a preview of an app. It's been through search, it's been through recommendation, through categories, etc. I'm not really sure how they got in there, but somehow they have gotten there. Out of these 3,900 people, 452 people have pressed on it to actually see more about the app so they can read the description, see the details, see the screenshots, etc. Slightly better than 10% conversion rate from seeing the, the app on the list to then actually going to check the details of the app, which I guess is pretty good. From this, we had a conversion rate of 3.3%, meaning that 94 people have downloaded the app out of these 452 people. On iOS, we had 94 downloads, which I think is pretty good, but what's even better is that on iOS, we had zero crashes. None of the times that people have used the app has it crashed on people on iPhone. I guess goes to show the build quality of the app in itself, which I'm quite happy about. This is my first production app and we haven't had a crash on anyone, which speaks to the quality of the work we've been putting in over the last year. Ego moment. These downloads then have come from mainly two territories, the US, the UK and Canada. US had 17 downloads and then UK, Canada had uh, seven each and then Australia was up in there in the mix too. But it's quite interesting to see that it's mostly English speaking since obviously the app is geared towards English speaking people as all the stories are in English as you may know if you watch these videos and by the way if you're watching these videos and you're not subscribed then please subscribe because the data shows that the most people who are watching this are not subscribed so public service announcement over please subscribe and leave a like down below if you're enjoying this series so far but where are these people coming from then so there's a very few different sources the main one is Apple Store search so what happens here is people go to the App Store they search for something maybe they search for wonder sagas maybe they search for kids audio stories and somehow our app pops up in that search this is the the main uh, acquisition channel with 67% of all traffic to the app page coming through this method of acquisition. What's also interesting is that 70% of people are using the app on iPhone, whereas 20% are using it on iPad and then 10% are using it on desktop. That's a little bit strange because I didn't even really make it available for use on desktop. It's not a desktop app, it's a mobile app. All of a sudden now these days you can have an iPhone on your laptop, kind of like a little iPhone that lives in your laptop I guess, where you can download apps if you have an M1 Mac. You can download apps that are made for iPhone on this little iPhone from that lives inside of your Mac. I know it's confusing, right? 10% of people, like nine people are using the app for this. And I'm not really sure how this works. I guess they they have their laptop, they connect the, the, the laptop to a Bluetooth speaker or whatever, or they just use the laptop speaker and then they just use the app through there because some of these people have been active users as well. So it's really, really strange. That's the breakdown. 70% iPhone, 20% iPad and 10% desktop. Moving on to Android. So Android launched a little bit later since we had some problems and also since we wanted to do some testing on iOS first before we launched the Android version. Android has been live for around six weeks and we've had so far 12 downloads. I guess it's significantly slower on Android, but it also makes sense since we've done most of the marketing in the US, where I guess iOS is more popular. Please fact check me on that because I have no clue. I'm just pulling that on my sleeve. And also what's interesting is that on Android, it differs significantly where these people are coming from. So US is still the main market, but then closely and very closely behind, Argentina and India are having the most downloads. And again, it's quite a small sample size of only three downloads per country out of those two that I just mentioned. But still quite interesting how the split is so very different on Android. Another interesting thing is that on Android, we actually had out of these 12 people, we've had two people pay money. So two people out of these 12 have converted to a trial, which is then converted into a full on subscription. Unfortunately, one of them has canceled that subscription already, but they managed to pay for one month. So they still have access for another couple of days. But I guess this uh, conversion rate is pretty good. If you can get 12 people to download the app, two people to actually convert to a paying user, that's a pretty good 
conversion rate, I think. So I'm quite happy about that, and that's quite interesting to do. See, there's actually money to be made on Android as well, as some people were saying. No, there's no way you're gonna make any money on Android because it's for poor people or whatever. Texts go green, right? Another interesting thing is that the conversion rate on Android is much higher. So you know how on iOS I said that the conversion rate is 3.3%? People who see the app on the App Store page to download is 3.3%, whereas on Android it's like 9.84%, which is significantly higher. Again, the sample size is much smaller, but still it goes to show that Android isn't completely irrelevant and not as irrelevant as a lot of people, a lot of my friends, a lot of people I spoke to, a lot of people on Reddit wrote it off as, so you're wrong on that. But let's get down to business because we all like cash, right? Italians bring cash, okay? <laughs> Let me pull up the insights here or the notes that I made. So the net amount of money that I made, this is after tax, that I made on the app in the first three months is 72.24 US dollars. And basically the app is priced at 9.99 per month, both on Android and iOS. It varies a little bit depending on the country. For example, it will adjust it to India and it will adjust it to Sweden, for example, to fit the VAT, etc. So it will change a little bit and also the exchange rate will vary over this time, especially this time not at the pound has tanked. By the way, people are saying that it's called soccer these days. I tend to agree. But right now, at this moment in time, we currently have five active subscriptions, which means that we have five people who are actively using the app and paying money for it. I think three of these have canceled their subscription already, so next month they won't be renewing. Two people are still active. This means that my MRR, which means monthly recurring revenue, currently is $52. If I leave this as is now, I'll make, I guess, $52 per month, which is not really true since two people are already canceled. But for the sake of the argument, my recurring revenue is $52 per month at this particular moment in time. Total collected revenue is 72 US dollars, which I guess is decent over three months. And it kind of goes to show that with limited marketing and with limited uh, expertise and knowledge in this really, you can still create an app, make money from it. And I guess now if I just leave this and don't do anything with it, I guess it will make a couple of bucks per month, but it probably won't be, won't be a sensation if I don't do any marketing. Right now I'm working on something parallel to this that I'm probably gonna try to bring in a little money through. And then I'm gonna funnel some of that into marketing wonder sagas because it seems to work. It seems to make some money. And then I'm gonna collect a little bit more feedback, make some updates, etc. I know I have a couple of things that I want to update. All in all, seven $72, five subscribers, $52 of recurring revenue, which is quite interesting and pretty cool, I think. With that said, if you enjoy these videos, if you think this is interesting, if you want to continue following this series, then please subscribe, leave a like down below. Oh, my lights are changing. I don't know. I live in a smart home that apparently just manages itself. But as you can see now, the lights around me are changing. Side note, we're finishing the video anyway. If you like this type of content, if you want to see me build more of this kind of stuff, if you have any ideas or stuff you want to see, if you have tips how I can monetize, how I can improve the app, then please leave those down below. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.